what's up guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hassel Slayman. I'm a third year medical student at St. George's University of London, for those of you who don't know me. And it's exam period. And because it's exam period, I wanna show you exactly how I use notability during the exam period. I'm not really a note taking person, so I wanna show you exactly how I use notability. And more importantly, I wanna show you how to use notability to make flowcharts. So let's take a condition. Let's take heart failure, for example. And heart failure can be really complicated. If you've got left heart failure, you can have things like pulmonary edema. If you've got right heart failure, you can get peripheral edema. You can have problems with your liver. And basically, sometimes it's really hard to wrap your head around the different things that can happen with a given pathology. So I wanna show you how I review using notability, using flowcharts and the different types of flowcharts that I can use. So I'm not a note-taking person. I know some of you find that very strange and you'd be thinking, okay, so like, why do you have notability? What are you using it for? So basically, if I need to attend a lecture, what I would do is the night before I might skim over the lecture and then I would import it into Notability. So I'm gonna show you how to import things into Notability. And I want all of you to know that you can pretty much import anything into Notability. And by anything, I mean you can import Microsoft Word, you can import PDFs, you can import, um, you can import Word documents, you can import pretty much anything onto, onto Notability. My example over here is the Grey Book. That's the book that we use to know exactly what to do in an emergency situation. And you can see the share button on the top right corner. So I'm gonna um, click on share file via Notability. Um, so you can add this note to another note. If you click on add to existing note, I can add it to any of these notes. Or in this case, I don't want it as an existing note. So I'm just going to say create new note. Um, you can change the note title. You can change the subject. You can insert it wherever you want under any of the dividers, but I'm just going to keep it in unfiled notes and you just click import and it's beautiful. It's done. So now I've got the gray book in my notability. So I've done a few questions on past tests recently and it said that the patient had ventricular fibrillation. So it said, what would you do? And I, I clicked on cardioversion, which was the right answer, and it was based on this flowchart. So what I would do is, because I got the questions right, I would, I would use green color and I would highlight. And basically I press on it so that I can get a really cute straight line because I don't like wonky lines. So that's what I'm gonna do. If I got a question wrong, I would highlight it in red so that when I go back to this, instead of reading everything and wasting time reading everything, I've already highlighted the high yield questions and the things that I need to extract from this book. So I've just got it highlighted. And then I could also use the pen and add extra notes on the side. Um, and now that I've imported this, now I can take my iPad anywhere and I've got this in my notability and I can access this from anywhere. And another thing is that sometimes you get, um, sometimes you get lectures online. So what you can do is chuck on Zoom on the side. So you can do a split screen kind of thing. Um, the split screen thing has to be one of the apps that's at the bottom. I've got my Apple Music here, so I'm just gonna drag this on the side until you get this mark. And then we can have music and this side by side. You can do that with Zoom, you can do that with emails, you can do it with pretty much anything. You can have the split screen. Another really cool thing, especially if you're someone that really likes neat notes and you're not fond of your handwriting. Like for example, I can say, I had three questions about shockable rhythms. I know, ignore my handwriting over here. It's quite <laughs> interesting. But what you can do is you can take this, the scribbly thing on Notability and you can put a circle around it. And then if you tap on it, it says convert and you can convert to text. It shows you what it will look like and it's pretty spot on, um, convert selection. And there you go, you can change the color at the bottom. Um, you can have it in a straight line, but if you're someone that is looking for neat notes, this is great. You can basically go really fast in class, add notes, and then when you're home, you can highlight whatever you want and convert it to text. And that way your notes are very clear and you don't have to go back and go like, 
what was I thinking when I was writing this, which has happened to me a fair few times because sometimes when the lecturer is speaking super fast, I just kind of write and write and write and I'm not thinking about what I'm writing. There's this other cool feature. So this button doesn't appear unless you're like recording because it knows that you're showing things to other people. If I wanted to make a lecture for you, all of you on YouTube or a PowerPoint or whatever, I could pretty much use this and then highlight the things that I'm talking about, which I think is really cool. Uh, some other cool features in my opinion is this um, microphone. You can chuck that on uh, while a lecture is going on, especially if the lecturer speaks really fast and that can record the lecture for you as you write. So at any point in time, if you've forgotten something, if you feel like you're lost, you can access that recording. It makes the file really big, but it's great and you can send it to your own email. But um, I've got the setting where it backs everything up onto my Google Drive. And possibly one of my favorite features is the document scan. So uh, you just click on that and it's super easy. It opens this up for you if you have a document, like you just, I don't have a document in front of me, but like, as you can see, there's this like blue line and this shows you what I'm gonna scan. Recently, I had my neurology placement and one of the neurologists had a beautiful mini mental state exam template and she didn't have an online copy and I really, I, I didn't want it to be a hassle for her. She had a hard copy. So I just scanned that. I used the document scan and as you can see, this is what it looks like. It is super clear and it's super easy to use. Another feature that I really like and that I use heaps is inserting uh, pictures into my documents. Basically what I would do is either download a picture from the internet or sometimes what I would do is screenshot a page of one of the books that I've got on my iPad and then I insert it in here. So you can do this by going to the photo library and for example, like if I wanted an e picture in, I can do this, it's inserting the photo. And ta-da! So this is the important part of the video in my opinion. We're gonna go through how to use flowcharts to review for your exams. So there are many different types of flowcharts or diagrams that I may use for revision and that's because I'm a visual learner and I know that if I've got a picture that summarizes everything, I am more likely to learn. Making flowcharts can be a pain because sometimes it goes all over the place. And that's one thing that's really good about notability because if you feel like you don't have enough space, like back in the day, I used to do it on an A4 size paper. And if I didn't have any space, then basically I kind of wasted an A4 size paper and things would get messy. And instead of notability, you can pick a piece of text that you added and then you can move it around to add more space to your diagram. So I'm gonna tell you about all the flowcharts that I use first. Um, sometimes you need some inspiration flowcharts. So here are some of my favorite books for flowcharts. Number one on the list is Med Maps for Pathophysiology. And this is essentially what it looks like. So this must be the last flowchart that I had. So this is SLE and it starts off with the environmental trigger. It says it's an autoimmune disease, environmental stresses. And then it goes into like, if you scroll down, it's like development of antibodies and then how you get the different signs and symptoms, which I think is great. And sometimes what I would do is highlight it in different colors. And then I could also add treatments on the side. Number two, mind maps for medical students. This isn't really a flow chart in terms of pathophysiology, but as you can see over here, it's the it's COPD and it tells you in a very summarized form, everything you need to know about COPD in two pages. Finally, another one of my lovely, lovely, lovely resources is the Calgary Guide. So for those of you who are not familiar with the Calgary Guide, it is an online guide that has a bunch of flowcharts. So let's go for something like heart failure. And I know that this is kind of a hard topic for so many people, so it's really nice to have it in the flowchart form. And as you can see, it's got so many different things like finding uh, physical exam findings, history, uh, cardiac shunts, uh, physiology of hyponatremia, like basically everything related to the topic, but we can go off with uh, left heart failure pathogenesis and you can basically print it out or you can make your own flowchart. It's in different colors, so makes it heaps easier to remember. Now for anything that's not there, or if you're one of those people that's kind of like me that still needs to make your own flowchart, there are different types of flowcharts and mind maps that I do. One of the main ones that I really like doing is getting a diagram from the internet. So like basic physiology, and that's how I sort of link all the different topics together. So say I wanted to understand how PPIs, 
So proton pump inhibitors, which are used to treat GERD. So say I wanted to know how exactly it works, what's its mode of action, etc. So what I would do is I would get a picture from the internet. So I've got this picture that shows the physiology of the stomach. And now I wanted to know how PPIs work or even say, I want to know, um, you've got a peptic ulcer and you want to know which part of the stomach it affects. So you could draw this on the diagram. So my example to use was the proton pump inhibitor. Where does it act? We know that it inhibits the H plus K plus ATPase. So I'm going to put a big, a big cross. I'm going to press on it hard. So it ends up being a smart, a straight line. That's what's really nice about notability. It makes it heaps easier to make shapes. So I'm just gonna put a massive cross and then I'm gonna say PPI. So now I know where PPIs act. So this is one way I use notability. So this is the other way I like to use notability to make flowcharts. So basically what I did in this diagram and I am not keen on drawing this again right now. So I drew out the hematopoiesis flowchart. And the reason why I drew that out was because it was heaps easy to draw this because it, it was just circles and straight lines. And what's really nice about notability is when you go, you can make sh shapes, like say this is a wonky circle. If I keep pressing on it, it makes a lovely circle for me. If I've got a wonky square like this, you see, it makes a beautiful square for me. And you can do that with a shape with any number of size. So this is a hexagon, there you go look it it looks incredible so it's heaps easy to make flowcharts that way and I labeled it and then I went back and I was like okay so how would an immune deficiency affect affect this cycle and I put down little crosses with ways that d these different conditions can affect hematopoiesis and I've also done that with this so this is uh, immunodeficiencies I put down crosses in different areas where the immunodeficiencies act to identify where exactly is the problem. Other ways you can do it if you've got more time in hand is by drawing different things. So um, I like notability because it gives me it gives me freedom to draw. If you are lazy, you could honestly also trace different things. Sometimes if something is particularly hard to draw, so for example, this intestine was not the large intestine, the small intestine was actually traced out. It's super easy to do that. You just insert an image. I feel like I need to show you how to do this. And I reckon you guys are gonna be mind blown. So for instance, if I wanted to trace, so we're gonna go back to this image and if I wanted to trace it and say I want it in black. So I'm gonna trace out the stomach and I am not super particular about how straight it is. I mean, it depends on how beautiful I want the flowchart to be. Now, basically what you wanna do is you wanna take that black outline off of the image. So I'm just gonna outline it and I'm gonna move it off. And then I'm gonna go back to this main image and delete it. And there you go, you've got a stomach. So for those of you who are not keen on drawing, that is an easy way and the cheat way to draw. And everything else I drew, on my own and basically these are the diabetic drugs. I drew this flow chart because I find diabetic drugs absolutely fascinating and also very difficult to understand in terms of the mode of action. And as I've explained to you before, I'm a visual learner. So this is how I put it together. I love using colors, but I didn't really want the stomach and all the basic things to stand out, but I definitely wanted the actions of the different drugs that are associated with diabetes to stand out. And that's why I've got them in different colors. Um, the green plus means that it's activating, the red minus means that it's inhibiting. Um, so this is one way I use the flowcharts. Another thing that I use flowcharts for is and the endocrine system. I don't know how people study the endocrine system without using flowcharts because this is life for me. So over here, I've got, as you can see, the like stress hormones and the stress response, and I've got ACTH and cortisol and what it inhibits. And then over here, you can see I've got a slightly thicker line. So exogenous cortisol and where it acts, what it affects. Um, and over here, as you can see, the dotted line means that there's not enough production. 
Okay, here's another example of how I've made flowcharts. If I can't be bothered drawing things out, or in this case, if I'm, so this is a treatment flowchart, um, or no, I think it's a diagnosis flowchart for pulmonary embolism. So as you can see, I wrote it down and then I've got arrows on like, if it's less than four points, it means PE is unlikely. So what would you do next? Greater than four points, it PE is likely. What would you do next? So here we go. These are some like treatment flow, treatment and diagnosis flow charts that I have made in different colors to signify different things. Finally, if I just wanna, if I wanna export this document, I just click on this in the top left corner. And as you can see over here, it's all the places you can share it. You can also say other apps and you can pick the format PDF, no image, RTF. So that would be, um, that would work on like Microsoft Word. Uh, you can export it and you just share the note and it shares it. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, it says it's backing up. And basically I've already got it backed up. So if you see auto backup, it says it's to my Google Drive. So as you can see, here are my folders. All of these are from my Notability. And I've got here my diabetic drugs flowchart because I edited it and it automatically, it says you uploaded today. I edited it today, so it uploaded today. Super quick, super easy, and there you go. Anyway, guys, I hope this video helped you guys out. Basically, um, I wanted to use this video to give you guys ideas for how to make flowcharts and how to use it in a way to help you with exams. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to send them through, how I made the flowchart, where I get the information from, whatever you need, and I'll catch you next week, and good luck with your exams. Have a good one.